everyone! In this video, I'm going to be talking about absolute advantage. And the definition that I have here on the screen, it's not the only sort of definition that you might get on absolute advantage, but I do think it's the most common sort of definition. So we're going to take two economic agents, and we say that agent one has an absolute advantage in the production of a good compared to agent two, if for a given number of resources, agent one can produce more of the good than agent two. And so when we're given information like we have, for instance, in table one here, so in table one, we have two agents, Ginny and Bonnie, and these guys can make two goods, good one and good two. The table is going to tell us the maximum total amount of product that these guys can make, given we're told they each have eight hours. So that's the resource that's being fixed. And in this case, the application of the definition is pretty easy. We're just going to have a look at our two goods and we're going to find out which of our agents can produce more. So if I look at the row corresponding to good one, for instance, you can see that with eight hours, Ginny can produce 500 of good one and Bonnie can produce 450. Now, since 500 is greater than 450, we're going to say Ginny has an absolute advantage in the production of good one. And actually, in our example here, Ginny also has an absolute advantage in producing good two because she can make, with those eight hours, 120 of good two, uh, but Bonnie can only make 60 and 120 is greater than 60. And so that's a very standard application of the definition that I have on the screen, on the screen there of how to find absolute advantage. We can see absolute advantage visually using our production possibility frontiers, so our PPFs. So I'm just looking at the diagram down here in the bottom right hand side corner. If you see the blue line, that's Ginny's PPF. So Ginny's PPF is going to tell us about the maximum amount of good one and good two that Ginny can make uh, and all the possible combinations of the two goods, right? Given that she has eight hours. And we actually just draw this line from the information that we have in the table. Of special interest to us when we're thinking about absolute advantage is our axis intercepts. So the vertical axis intercept, given that our vertical axis tracks good one, hopefully you can see that label there, that tells us that the most that Ginny can make of good one, so she's not making any of good two here, good two is equal to zero at this point. Well, that amount that's equal to 500 and we can just get that from the table, right? And that's, that's going to be Ginny's vertical axis intercept. Ginny's horizontal axis intercept, given that our horizontal axis is tracking the amount of good two that's being produced, well, that's 120. That's the maximum amount of good two that she can make if she only spends uh, her time on good two. So at this point, the amount of good one that Ginny is making is equal to zero. Bonnie's PPF, we can construct and interpret it in a similar way. That's that red line here. Bonnie's vertical axis intercept is 450. That's how much of good one that she can make at most if she makes none of, of good two. And her horizontal axis intercept is equal to 60. That's the maximum that she can make uh, if she makes zero good one and she spends all of her eight hours making good two. Now it follows from this interpretation of our PPFs that if we want to see absolute advantage, we just have to look to the axis intercept and see which is the larger. So in our example, if we think about the vertical axis intercept, Ginny's lies above Bonnie's. This means that she, she can make more of good one. She has the absolute advantage in making good one. If we look to the horizontal axis, we can see Ginny's uh, axis lies more to the right. So it's larger than Bonnie's. So that indicates absolute advantage because she can make more good two than Bonnie uh, with her eight hours of resources. I will say that it is important if we do compare the PPFs to make sure that all of our actors have their PPFs drawn given that they have the same amount of resources. So I drew these PPFs with both of our agents having eight hours. I will also say that it definitely doesn't have to end up this way. Uh, often you'll have cases where one agent has an absolute advantage in one thing and another agent has an absolute advantage in another, or there could be no absolute advantage if both of our agents are producing the same amount given uh, the amount of resources that they have. In this example, Ginny definitely has an absolute advantage in both goods. And this means she's actually, she's really more efficient than Bonnie in producing both good one and good two uh, with her eight hours of time, with her resources. She's just more efficient uh, than Bonnie using those resources to make both goods. 
Now, as I said in the beginning, you might see other sorts of definitions floating around uh, for absolute advantage. I did do a video on this. I'll link to it below in the description in case you're interested. I hope that this video helped. If it did, please like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys are having a good day.